Last year I made a video called Norway's Top 5 Gravel Roads and in that video I said Norway is an undiscovered country when it comes to its gravel tracks. Now there are many I am yet to explore. So this year I was on a mission to seek out new gravel roads and civilizations and to boldly go where some people have gone before but perhaps without a GoPro, a 1500 euro drone and a small YouTube channel. I mapped out all the gravel roads I wanted to cycle this summer. 2,000 kilometers of soil, grit and stone awaited. But out of the many exciting roads to explore, there was one that stood out. One that whispered to me. I'd heard rumors about this great gravel road within the Norwegian cycling community. Some called it the Norwegian version of the Bolivian Death Road for its narrow path and vertical drops. Situated high in the remote mountains of central Norway, it was built over a hundred years ago. The road took close to 30 years to be built by hand and offered an incredible 42 hairpin corners all the way up a 1,000 meter mountain. To put that into comparison, the world famous Lisa Vajen has 27 hairpins. When it finally opened in 1934, it soon became a tourist magnet, deemed the most wonderful road in Europe. But then the war came and the years that followed the road was quietly forgotten as a tourist destination. By 1962 a more modern and safer road lower down the valley was built to replace it and over the next 60 years rock falls, landslides and erosions left the road a forgotten relic of its past glory. But in 2020 funding was raised to finally restore it and it would be rebuilt exactly how they did it in the early 20th century. A year later, this once forgotten road opened again, not for cars and cruise tourists, but for cyclists and hikers. Thousands of cyclists rushed to the mountains to ride this epic, newly refurbished road. When I say thousands, I mean like four people. Promotion of the road has been sporadic to say the least and Visit Norway does an incredible job at providing the least amount of information as it possibly can. To God, it's not damaged. There goes my video. Yeah. By train, it is a difficult area to reach and will require two additional days of riding to get there. In the evening of day one, I took shelter at Bigdon Mountain Hotel, where I met the owner and told him of my quest. He told me to head to the library and find an old book from 1904 called Norway, The Northern Playground. I thought I'd keep my helmet on just in case the bookshelf fell on me. It's by a man called Sir William Slingsby, a fellow Englishman with great love for Norway and its nature. Although it was wrote over a hundred years ago, the information was just as relevant for today, and there was one bit of advice that ended up rescuing my whole project. Bear Bittihorn has been ferrying people down Bigdon Lake since 1912. It just feels like the most amazing adventure going, going right into the heart of Yotha Highland National Park. It's cold, it's windy, it's going to be extreme. What an adventure! It's been epic. The boat is always full of hikers, but very few cyclists. And as everybody gets off here, 
I continue to the end of the lake, where the gravel adventure begins. It's unbelievably cold right now, but this, my friend, this road has no sides, has no nothing. It's going to lead me onto an incredible gravel track so along the mountains and then down to a fjord. And I don't think many people know about this road. It's not signposted. So once again, we're exploring here. My God, look at this, guys. Look at this. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. Come. What is to come? At this point, the weather is turning really bad, and there seems to be more and more snow appearing, and things just don't feel right. This is not good. Oh man, I'm not going to get over this, am I? There goes my video. Luckily, there's a main road that takes you down to the fjord. Because of the bad weather, there'd been a landslide. Which meant one thing. An 800 meter climb back up in the pissing rain. You know, it's certainly hard work making adventure cycling videos. I have so much footage that never turns into a video because I just didn't get that ending and I thought that this video was going to be one of them. But while Norway doesn't always give you an ending, it gives you an intermission. It's intermission. Rise and stretch time. Time to refresh yourself and visit our snack bar. Got a yen? An intermission is an opportunity to stop, think, and go again. Gentlemen, I have a plan. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the weather will be doable. 28 degrees, blistering heat in Oslo. Arrived here, it's 13 degrees and it's raining. Throw me a freaking bone here. I've got no accommodation booked for tonight, it's pitch black. It's just finding somewhere with a roof over my head because it's raining. So a little update. Well, it's forecast to be partly cloudy with a little bit of sunshine. No rain, no rain, but it's been raining all through the night. I was hoping for more snow, So we're going up here. 
it's just completely covered in mist. So I should note, to cut out the two day of travel, which I did last time, I've taken a bus directly to Irvry Ordal. And from there, I joined the road from the opposite direction, where I take the 1,000 meter switchbacks up to the top of the mountain. See what happens when I get, get further up. Maybe there is some blue sky above, above the mist. but it's manageable. No, the visibility is so poor. It's <sighs> mouth. This place would be spectacular in good weather. And the big question is, can we get through this? Or is it gonna be blocked with snow, landslides, who knows? But if it's blocked, I'm in the shit basically because 160 kilometers a day, I cannot afford to have to turn back on myself. Halfway through the road, you reach this famous old tunnel. Come on. And at this point, I'm soaking wet, my GoPro has stopped working, and I feel like just giving up filming and count my losses on this project. Come on. But that book I read a month back is in my head. And for some reason, there is a little voice that's saying, just get the GoPro working at all costs and keep filming. Don't give up yet. All I wanted was just a little break in the clouds. And as I came out the tunnel, I finally got it. I could see the valley for the first time around me. And it was magnificent. It was like being in a fantasy world. And for the final 10 kilometers, it was truly the greatest gravel experience I've ever had on a bike. Like something out of Bolivia, you know, like one of them crazy mountain roads you see. Just like vertical drops at certain points. The waterfalls all coming off the mountains here. You've got this incredible valley. Like the Norwegian mountains, just everywhere you are, they're always different. They always look different. Like the mountains here look completely different to the ones a bit further down the road. So it's just this never ending, changing scenery, so much contrast. If I made my top five gravel video again, this would be number one, without a shadow of a doubt. Imagine what it'd be like on the perfect day. But to be honest with you, this is why I love cycling in Norway. The multitude of emotions that you experience in one ride is what makes it special. I did my best to show you this magnificent road. It's a road that should be celebrated, should be appreciated, and should be cycled. I never met one other cyclist on both of my journeys through this area. But I hope that's not the case next time. Oh, you, you like my shoes? If someone likes my bike, Yeah, that's it.
done it guys i think we've done it we've made it yes that is a relief that is a relief